Okay. Hey, what's up, you guys? So this is gonna be a video on Astaroth, Astarte, Ishtar, uh, Inanna, Isis. However you view the synergy, whoever you might call her as, she's known as Lady of 10,000 Names. She's also known as a Sumerian goddess, a goddess of love and war. So I call her Astarte, as well I've connected with her Isis aspect. Um, it makes sense why she's known as Lady of 10,000 Names. Actually, <laughs> because when you think about it, she has so many different names. She's incarnated in so many different pantheons. So, hey, what's up, you guys? My name is O'Shea. What's up? Hey. So, as well, you can call me Atanu, for that's my magical name. And as well, this is Occult Cat TV, the channel you know you love. So, I love talking about... Well, I'm a Libra, you guys, so I love talking about love, uh, as well as love goddesses, for my name, Atanu, is actually the Sanskrit word for Eros. So that's my, my daemon, that's my deific embodiment, you could say, the emanation behind Eros. And in this way, I love talking about love. And as well, in the same way, I also do love readings. I do love spell work for people, not manipulation in any way, right? Oh, get your special person back or oh, get your ex back. No, I don't do that. But I actually, what I do is I bring these, this essence and energy of love into your life, such as you, you probably feel right now. That's, this is what I'm good at. I teach a lot of things. I teach the occult, magic, witchcraft, sorcery, divination, as well as uh, financial alchemy, financial liberation, uh, and, uh, and many different things, exercise, fitness. Um, but what I'm the most, what I'm the best at, what I excel most at is empowering people with this essence of love. I help people to better understand themselves and as well know themselves merely through my essence and energy. When you're getting a consultation or as well a magic mentorship, you're not just getting myself, you're getting the energies in which I provide. And it's in this same way that usually when someone's with me, it's the energies, it's this transmission of energies that helps them. My energy is able to pull the blockages out of you. And then as well, we talk about it and I help you to better understand it. I'm someone that has manifested about four physical marriages, actual marriages, where it was two people that met through either my live stream, my channel in the occult during a mentorship session, uh, I've just noticed that when someone spends enough time with me, especially whether it be in consultation, hiring uh, a one month ritual service. As I said that, I just saw um, a butterfly. It was a black and yellow butterfly fly by. Um, so may maybe that's a sign. But by getting these empowerments, these attunements that I'm able to give as well, I've been able to manifest love for myself on numerous accounts. Love is love is different than just manifesting a uh, a relationship, right? Because love is a sacred energy. It's an actual exchange that until you love yourself, until you go within yourself and you start to know who you are and you start to feel love. You start to feel good. This is actually what will then start to manifest and as well create a life that reflects this inner feeling as within, so without. So it's as we go within ourselves and we start to do the healing, we start to do the work, we start to, we start to 
heal our traumas, our core wounds, and we start to connect with our emotions, feel our emotions. Not everyone is connected to their feeling. Not everyone is connected to their emotions. But that's what magic is. It's about having that flow with yourself. It's about having that flow with your emotions and as well knowing who you are. So uh, give me a second, you guys. I think I actually got to uh, plug in my, my computer really fast. See, that's that's where I'm knowing myself right here. Got to Okay, cool. So, why I also bring up love is that this is what Astarte is good at. So, by the title and the name of the video, it's going to be Astarte 333 and Crossing the Abyss, something of that nature. So when you're working with as well the goddess Astarte, she helps you not only understand love and manifest love, and she also helps you to understand your emotions. She helps you to, and from understanding your emotions and that, that water-like flow of the moon, she as well helps you to channel magic all through your feeling all through your emotion and even this right now this video this is a feeling i felt like making this video i pondered it for a day or two to see what i would channel or put into it in a sense all this is a channeling it's just one take um but it's i felt it was right to make it now and it's in the same way that Astarte helps us to go into our bodies and helps us to ground ourselves and from this know ourselves. Astarte has been a such an amazing goddess and as well guide along the path of my journey, showing me who I am. I remember it was first Astarte that came to me and we were talking and she told me I'd be a, a good occult writer. And now you could say that this is the goddess telling me, oh, be an occult writer. But as well, she was a reflection of myself, something that is external, but as within, so without, as without, so within, that was showing me who I was. That yes, I should write books on the occult. Yeah, I should go into the occult even further and better understand it. So the reason why to shift you guys to um, understanding the, the abyss. So Astarte is a goddess that can also, she can help us to discover ourselves, help, helps us to know ourselves, and as well manifest love. And why I wanted to bring forward the energies of love, these divine sacred energies, is because, and as I said that, there's another... There's another uh, butterfly is because love is what creates worlds. When you love yourself, that yes, the in Buddhism, and when we're going through the dark matter and the nothingness, right? So that's the abyss. Every culture will define it differently. Shamans literally just say going through immense darkness, right? But then if we look at like Crowley's work and Thelema, which is something that it's it's half of he, his own trauma, right? His own indoctrinations and programmings. And then it's half, yeah, truth. That the abyss exists. That our world is in, the, in, that we are in the underworld. We're in the hell realms. We're born into this abyss. And merely walking the path and understanding the abyss, we can, we're mere, we are merely, or, we're more taking on a mindset to help us to navigate this abyssal realm. And that's actually what the crossing of the abyss is in magic. For those of you that are walking the cliffothic path. 
as well. It's also in the Sephiroth. There's the Abyss, and it's the 11th sphere on the Kabbalistic tree. It is Da'oth. We enter through the Sephiroth, or if you're already someone that is a watcher, or you're an incarnated being that has has a empire, has a realm, you, you're from the infernal realms. It might just be so, correct? And you incarnated as a watcher, as a higher dimensional being, to then understand this realm, understand this reality. And the Kabbalistic tree is, it is but one system that helps us to better understand and break down this initiatory system because that's what it is. It's an initiatory system. You can't, you can't just define it into one thing because it is life. It's yes, we do. We might do a ritual. We might do a ritual from a book. I recommend we do our own rituals. We talk to the deities ourselves and see where they guide us and lead us, right? That's, a lot of people talk to me and they're like, oh, uh, Astarte led me to you, O'Shea, or, um, and they, people usually call me by my spiritual name, I notice, more than my, you know, physical name. And that shows that it's, they remember it. Atanu, that is my daemon. That's the being that as I crossed the abyss in those realms, as I went through the immense darkness, this is the being I became. I became Atanu. Was I always a master of my craft when it came to the occult, Di divination, um, psychology, philosophy, um, music, uh, manifesting, the, the occult, magic? No, I didn't always know myself. I, I had a connection to my daemon, but I didn't know what that was originally. But then, you know, you start being pulled and led and guided places by signs and synchronicities. I can definitely say that looking back, I was always guided and led by signs and synchronicities. I can see that. And I didn't know at the time, but it's, it's like when you, the first book you pull off the shelf is Plato. And then it falls to a page that talks about philosopher kings. But then as well, in the same way, um, the... Uh, Demon Slayer, uh, you, you go to the store and then it's like, which anime or which manga should I buy? And then it's like, you, you go to the anime section and then 10 copies of Demon Slayer just knock, like get knocked off the shelf. Like they just fall. It's like, okay, life is saying something. It's speaking to me. Life speaks to us in all ways, through all things. Life or the source rather is even speaking to you right now through me. I'm just merely embracing my path. Plato walked his path. He, he gave his wisdom. And Plato would literally walk with civilians. He was a philosopher that was so smart and so wise, but he cared about people. He knew that the smartest, the wisest thing you could do is talk to people and just get, and just get their gnosis, help better understand reality, not only through your lens, but also getting different perspectives. So Plato would literally just walk down the road and just talk to people. Hey, what do you experience? What have you been through? And that's, that's powerful. If he didn't also walk his path and leave his great work, did what he did, then we wouldn't have that wisdom. We wouldn't know what true philosopher kings are, what true philosophers are. And it's Plato's allegory of the cave. Let me, let me direct you to Plato's allegory of the cave. It is in this cave that we are only seeing shadows. That behind us, outside, there's, there's the outside. And it's sunny outside. And we don't know that it's that it's outside. We only can look at the shadows. We're only faced and looking at the shadow. But then it's once we unshackle our own chains, we understand who we are and we leave the shadow. We stop just looking at the shadow and we can look towards what's outside of the cave. 
Now, this is an analogy. I summed it up just a little bit. This is an, I highly recommend you guys go look at it. Now, this is an analogy for one liberating one's perception, expanding one's mind, expanding one's perception. To look outside of the cave is to actually go into reality. It's pulling yourself out the matrix. That once you stop looking at the illusions, Neo, that once you stop looking at the illusions of what you thought life was, but rather you go into yourself to find the truths of who you are, this is what will guide you. That's what they mean by there's an abyss all around us, that we are merely looking at shadows thinking their truths. You might do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This is as Einstein said, that's insanity. We have to, we have to walk our path knowing who we are and what we're meant to, ach to achieve. As Astarte would say, Astaroth, Inanna, as this goddess would say, you have to have a, you have to have a vision. You have to have a big picture. You have to have goals, a purpose, right? This is something that Inanna, that Ishtar, Isis, Astarte has truly impressed on me throughout the journey. And when we truly look at this big picture, this vision. What is your vision? What are your goals? Who are you meant to? What are you meant to achieve? These are all the things that you should ask yourself. And you should define as you're walking your path, especially that of magic and the occult. Because as you shape, craft and create this narrative by by journaling, and having a journal, having a book of shadows. And when you, when you go into ritual, when you go into spell work, writing down what, what you experience, what you feel, because as you're manifesting, whether it be a, whether it be a love, like a love ritual, a ritual to love yourself and to invite the goddess within an invocation or be evoking and manifesting love, lovers, soulmates, friends, uh, a network, right? People that love you um, as well. Manifesting, manifesting and ritual really aren't different. M magic and manifestation at its core are the same thing. They base from the same principles, the universal laws, all is mind, universe is mental, um, feeling and as well vibration. And that's why we love ourselves. And when we're going through the abyss, when we're going through this nothingness, we trust ourselves, we trust what we're being shown, we trust where we're being led despite how we feel but despite what might be happening physically, it's about going through that nothingness going through the abyss to cross it. And as you do as you trusted with trusted the path, you had main, you maintained vision, your vision, you embraced your goals, you became who you were meant to be. It's the abyss that is shedding the layers of this reality of this illusion, so that you can enter into that of your divine truths. We could even call them the veils of Isis, Isis, Aset. And this is why we work with Isis, this is why we work with Astarte, Ishtar, Inanna, Astaroth, however you view her, to cross this abyss. She prepares us for the journey and helps us to understand who we are. It's not just she's a goddess of love. She's also a goddess of war. So she teaches us how to embrace this, as they said in the Bible, every man Everyone faces a war within. This is where we are calming ourselves, or becoming center, coming into center and oneness with ourselves so that we can calm that storm and know that we are the storm. We are the chaos. 
And once we understand and know this, we have power. We are powerful. We have a purpose. We should be passionate about it. But then as well being centered in knowing to take the right actions, to take inspired action and inspired movement going forward. Because sometimes we want to keep going, keep manifesting, keep creating, keep gaining power, keep doing rituals and magic. But sometimes it's also just laying there and just being in tune with our body and knowing when we need water, right? Stay hydrated, you guys. Stay hydrated. Knowing to do the things that our body feels. And sometimes we need rest, especially since it's the end of the year. And this is a time when a lot of us, a lot of you guys, will be going through the abyss soon. And Astarte is specifically the sphere of I believe it's Gob Shabla on the cliff off. And that's when we're being prepared for our abyssal crossing, where our mind is being dissolved. So you might actually feel as if your mind's being emptied. More, more so not emptied, but because that's the sphere of Samael. That's where we're first being initiated into the darker arts, where we're being initiated into magic. And these are the things that I teach also in my Cliffothic mentorships, you guys. So if you do need a guide, a coach, a mentor to either work with Astarte for manifesting and rituals, yes. But as well, if you need a guide through the Cliffoth and the underworld, if you find that you are in the underworld and you kind of don't know what to do, this is why I have my magic mentorship sessions. I have five week ones and as well eight week. And then I also do consultations. So these are also the things I provide to the community as someone who's already crossed the abyss, as someone who's embraced the Clefothic path. I, I've already, this past year, I'm grounding my initiations into Thaumael. And a part of my initiations were, was to raise a coven. Or it's, no, it's, a, it's an occult order uh, as well, it's called Coven of the Sacred Torch. So as I was in the Cliffoth and I was uncovering all of this gnosis and going through this path myself, a part of my true will, a part of my magnum opus was to, was to unveil this science, was to teach the science. And as well, it just so happens that two of my mentors or Bobby Hemet transitioned a teacher that heavily inspired me on the path, you guys. Shout out to brother Bobby Hemet, keeping his spirit alive, empowered. Um, I, I don't know if he's passed away fully, but his teaching spirit transcended. Um, and brother Panic did a shout out video, or did a shout out to him on that. And then brother Panic passed just two a few months ago. And if you go back on my channel, you guys, it was a tribute to Lucifer was my first video. Lucifer inspired me to make my channel. And then it was a tribute to Bobby Hemet, someone who inspired me to walk the path that I heavily respected, helped me to understand working with Satan and the devils, helping me to understand that Thamayel energy, Azazel, Satan, Lucifer, Moloch, these beings, and how they're not evil, they're not bad, but our ego distorts how we perceive the devils. That yes, truth in an illusion is always going to be demonized. That's why they they raise up religion and Christianity and all these things that suppress you rather than teaching you and teaching you that you're all the all is mind and universe and the universe is mental. That your mind creates reality, creates the simulation. Because they don't want you to know that. The Illuminatis, the elites, they create reality in that way. But the thing is, you are an Illuminati. You are an elite. You are a cosmic elite. Most likely, if you're viewing this or seeing this, you've incarnated to show yourself who you are. 
to embrace who you're meant to be and as well what you're meant to achieve. There's a huge shift at the moment. And as we, as the collective crosses this abyss, the old elite, a lot of them are going to fade away, die off. They're, they're old, like bag of bones, like the president. And they're just going to fade away. And then it's going to be up to us, the new elite, those that are doing the work, working with these beings, embracing magic, we're going to be the ones that then rule. The true witches, the true shamans, the true occultists, the true magicians. We are the ones that are embracing our magic, our sacred word, our speech, our skill. Love for ourselves and as well others. We are unifying. We are embracing the field of unity, rather the distortion field of the ego. We are healing ourselves so that we don't become traumatized and like that of the old elite. And this is what the Egyptian pantheon wants to let the new cosmic elite know. For this is, as Bobby Hemet said, the coming of the cosmic elite. And that's who we are. We are the cosmic elite, elevating and growing in our ascension. This is why the Egyptian pantheon lies at the top of the cliff off. And a lot of you guys will be getting to the top soon. And as well, those that are already at the top are about to be there. You are the forerunners in this ascension. This is why I'm even here or doing this. I'm not the old elite that just keeps this hidden or secret. That no, I went through the initiatory path to become my own elite myself. And now I'm teaching this Illuminati science, the sacred science, the initiatory system of ancient Egypt. And for those of you that also wish to take it further, I have Coven of the Sacred Torch. That's the fifth tier on my Patreon. This is where I'm giving you guys data sets, aiding you in better understanding your initiations through the cliff off. Most likely, Hikate led you here. Heka herself, um, Isis or Astarte, right? Ashira, Inanna, um, Ma'at, Thoth, Horus, Set, Satan, Setuk, Azazel, the demonic gatekeepers, the spider goddess, the spider queen. They want you to cross the abyss. They want you to have the knowledge and the information. And that's why I'm making this video to let you guys know that I'm here as a mentor, as a guide to walk this sacred path. And I will be teaching it on my YouTube. I will be breaking it down the whole, this whole next year. I can see where the collective is going and I will be giving readings. I will be guiding people. And in the same way, those of you that understand what I'm doing, that's where I have my Patreon where I'm giving you guys in depth data sets on this path that I've walked with the, the initiatory gatekeepers of magic. Belial, Azazel, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Bael, Satan, Asmode. Beelzebub. And in this same way, these spirits have shown me magic. They've shown me how to manifest and to create my own reality, to understand magic. And from this, I've gained immense wisdom from the path. And now I'm Here's a guide empowering you guys with, as well, the fourth tier of my Patreon is a fate and destiny source alignment and as well soul attunement ritual. So what this does is, in a sense, you're being empowered by my daemon. So as I've walked this path, I already have the wisdom to understand. I have the mindset to navigate myself through the cliff off and the underworld. And this next year, it's going to be hell on earth. There's going to be, um, and we can just look at the numero like the numerology of the year. It's an eight year. It's also a dragon year for Chinese, for, for the Chinese astrology, 
uh, for the Chinese signs. And eight is the symbolism of money, dragons. So to reach the dragons, this is this is beyond the cliffoth. This is on top of the cliffoth is the dragon energies. This is also why the beings such as Lucifer, Azazel, Hecate, Astarte, why they teach draconian magic, dragon magic, is because that's they were taught by the dragons. They have aspects of being dragons. And this is why dragon magic is so powerful but it, and so transformative, but as well it it is a it takes a toll on the body, the mind, and the psyche for an individual that isn't prepared. And that's actually why I have my fate and destiny source alignment ritual, because it's removing the obstacles and empowering you with my daemon and as well with this ritual I'm doing every month. So as I give you the data sets and the information, I'm also giving you this source alignment and soul attunement. So then your life starts to become in alignment. It's as if Lucifer, Hecate, Satan, or Astarte was guiding you themselves, but I'm an intermediary. So as a, as a shaman, as a medium, I'm an intermediary between worlds, guiding people and helping them to connect to the deities. So it's in the same way that if you wanted to book a consultation, if you're looking for someone to help you in, me in mediumship, psychic development, these are also things that I provide. So uh, you can email me at occultcattv at gmail.com. Everything is also down below. So getting into the 333 energies and crossing the abyss. So 333, what is 333? When we are coming up to the abyss, whether it be in the Sephiroth or the Cliffoth, this is actually that 333 energy, both of them making the 666, the atom, the or carbon, um, I believe it's carbon, electro, electrons, six carbon, six electrons, six neutrons, or atoms, it's something like that. Um, I'm more channeling again, but the 666 energy is the awakening and the unlocking of the body, empowering us with this dark matter energy, as well empowering our black flame, the black flame dissolving all truths or dissolving all illusions, no longer serving us, allowing us to step into our truths. So when we are crossing the abyss, we will see a lot of symbolism of 333, this will also be a representation of that Karanzon energy. Karanzon is this gatekeeper to the abyss. For those of you outside of the Cliffoth, not yet in, it's the being that keeps you out. That makes sure you don't enter if you're not supposed to. But in some ways, the elite initiate us through, through, this, through this system through movies, TV, TV shows, um, advertise, uh, uh, they pretty much use a lot of different rituals to initiate, usually music. And that's where um, it has to do with a someone selling their soul and then bringing everyone else into the abyss through their music. They don't know what they're doing, but that's what it is. This is why those of you that are occultists walking this path trying to understand this, you might be in the abyss. You might have been initiated through music in some way. One second, you guys. I have a few candles lit. And as we cross this abyss ourselves, we're merely gaining the perception and awareness to thrive in this dark matter realm. My ritual at the end of the month actually aligns you so that you transmute the chaos instead of um, being steamrolled by it, instead of getting bombarded so that you can start to un wake up, so that you can start to better understand yourself, your, your path, the path you're meant to walk, your destiny, and become who you're meant to be. And for myself, I 
I had people that helped guide me through the abyss, other people going through it as well, that were a little bit further and they were channeling for me, I would channel for them. And this is how I got through. So I am a torch in the night, a torch of Hikate, a light bearer, a torch of Lucifer, becoming a Lucifer, solidifying the crown of, I call the crown of Ariman, the crown of apotheosis, the crown of Lucifer, I'm now re revealing, right? Which the word apocalypse even just means reveal. I'm now revealing the apocalypse or I'm rather revealing this science and this gnosis of what's going on. And I will be doing that more uh, on the fourth or the third, fourth and fifth tier of the Patreon. And then the fourth and fifth tier get the ritual. So I will be going more in depth into these sciences uh, as my channel progresses. This was my 333rd video. So I looked at it as this was as well a part of the initiation. And this was a much needed video that came up at this exact time. So, and as, as I said that, my phone just... Um, and at, my phone just alerted me, Coven of the Sacred Torch. So that's uh, that was actually very powerful, very synchronistic. So those of you that wish to join the Coven, that is the fifth tier of the Patreon. And last thing I just want to say is, or uh, as well, Astarte has a uh, has a tarot card reading for for you guys. Whether you join or not, but know that there are more tarot card readings on the Patreon. So, two things. This is the message. So, a very heavy message or a very empowering message from the goddess herself. And just some gnosis that I've learned is that if you are to survive these trials, if you are to be empowered by them rather than fall to them, you have to do the emotional healing, the somatic work, healing the trauma that is within your nervous system. And this will start with, you'll start by loving yourself. That when things come up, right? It was just like I was talking about Buddhism earlier, the nothingness. That when you're going through the nothingness, the dark matter will pull these traumas out of you. And now they're supposed to try to re-traumatize you. If you can integrate what you've been through, you will remain supreme. You'll become powerful and ever flourishing. And that's truly what the left-hand path is for, to step into your power. But you must step into your power through your Okay, my uh, camera died for a second, so it might die again, but we'll see. You must step into your power through your healing and embrace who you're meant to be. So allow yourself to heal. I'll go more in depth into videos like this on healing because this is actually my expertise. I came into the left-hand path as a, as a healer. I wanted to push healing. To, I wanted to create miracles through healing. And for myself, I have, especially working with the, the daemons, the demons, uh, Bael, Astarte, um, Lucifer, Azazel, Satan. By working with these spirits, Hecate, I've been able to heal myself specifically tre tre immensely. I had a death experience, uh, an, not even a near death, a true death smacked my jaw into the ground, I died, I was resurrected. And I'm grateful to still be here because I get to inspire and motivate people. I get to live life and go look at the sun and just, I just love life for what it is, you guys. And I'm really grateful to be here. And that's why I teach. So thank you guys. And I give you guys this reading from the goddess herself. So let's get into this reading. I haven't seen these cards. 
So lust in revert. Okay, a lot of you guys don't feel empowered. You don't feel empowered. Now it is time to step into your to into your energy. Allow yourself to heal, specifically the sacral center, and allow your energies to flow. There's a blockage at the moment, and you can't block the flow. You have to, again, heal that. So this ties in to what I was just talking about. You have to heal that blockage and look at what's coming up and then go through that and gain power from healing. So step into, start to create, and that will remove the blockage. Step into your power through creating. You are now going, th so this makes sense. Yeah, a lot of you guys, if you were led here, you're going through the abyss or you're, about, you're being prepared for the abyss. So we have Anubis and the gates of the underworld. You are going through a rebirth as the scarab. This is the source. You're becoming the source. So you're carrying your own source and your soul in through the underworld back to source to gain and to know who you are again. You're in the underworld or going through the underworld and that's why things haven't been as prosperous as you might have wanted. Um, so that's this is a confirmation. Anub Anubis and the Egyptian pantheon is with you, guiding you guys forward. At the moment, you need to start to shift and understand what you're going through, creating this change. Change is in reverse because you're not embracing a change. You're with, uh, King Paimon is with you as well. You should start to work with King Paimon and he will start to guide you and help you to better understand this transition from a grounded mindset. charge my camera after this, but Queen of Wands. So Astarte is with you, fiery, passionate queen, empowering you, prepping you for this journey. At the moment, you're not embodying the energies that you need to. You should start to be receptive to the cliff off. I would start to work with the beings themselves. Work with Astarte, work with Azazel, work with Bael, Belial, Lucifer, Lucifuge. Uh, Hikate, Lilith, start to work with these beings and integrate what you're being shown, what you're being told, and this gnosis. Understand the underworld. Start to research. Start to research. Start to prepare yourself. You can't really prepare. You're going to go through it. You're not going to know what you're going through. It's going to be, it is going to be sporadic, and you're not going to know yourself from it, but from dissolving all illusions and allowing yourself to cross right so just being receptive just just being receptive like allowing everything to leave that isn't meant and i will have a video on my crossing but if you want a more in-depth understanding of it it will be on the patreon with my personal experiences that's where you're going to get the in-depth exclusive gnosis you're not going to find anywhere else my own personal experiences. And then the last card out of all cards, you guys, the devil. From all of this, you will become the devil. You're embracing the devil. That's why you have to integrate these energies of the dark matter, whether you be masculine or feminine. Those of you that work with Lilith, that have a high affinity for Lilith, daughters of Belial, daughters of Satan, daughters of Azazel, daughters of Astarte, these devils... Astarte, Isis, the Sephirothic aspect we could say is Isis. The devil or demonic, the Cliffothic aspect of Astarte is um, Astaroth. She went through the un. through the underworld as Inanna to become Astaroth. 
It's the same with us. We're going through the underworld, the hell realms. We're being cleansed and embracing apotheosis from the cleansing of the, the, the dissolution of our ego and the illusions. As we're crossing the abyss, our ego is dissolving, the illusions are dissolving, and we're stepping into a more true and authentic version of ourself. But just as we must walk the journey and walk the path, it's the same with the crossing. You still have to go through it. You can see the end. You see you will be the devil. You will be a powerful magician, a powerful magus, powerful emperor, a powerful empress. But you must walk that path. You must embrace that journey and know who you are despite how you feel. And with that, the last card is right here. Actually, wow, there's two cards. So completion, you are completing a journey by embracing this crossing, starting a new chapter as you make it to Thaumael, as well as fortune. So fortune favors the bold. The goddess of fortune has favored you. This is why you've been given this video. I've made this as an offering to the goddess herself. I spoke to her. A lot of this was as well a channeling from Astarte. So the goddess of fortune, wealth, prosperity, abundance, luck has favored you. You will make it through your crossing and you were led to this video for a reason. This is why the video was made, empowered to aid you guys in the crossing. I give this video as an offering to goddess Astarte, as well as goddess Hecate, the spider goddess, and the Egyptian pantheon. On top of that, my daemon as well, bringing forward this wisdom and gnosis, so, or myself. Um, so with that, you guys, if you would like to book a personal reading with myself, Uh, if you want to book a personal reading, I do personal readings. On top of that, I also do magic mentorships, cliffothic mentorships as well. If you want to, if you are looking for a guide through the cliffoth, through the abyss, understanding the hell realms, demonol demonolatry, channeling, mediumship, these, this is what I excel in. This is where I flourish, as well as uh, I've been teaching people financial alchemy uh, and how to uh, liberate themselves financially through the occult. I also do consultations, occult consultations, uh, magic mentorships, and ma uh, ma magic and manifestation calls. If you just want to learn manifestation and magic, and on top of that, if you wish, if you want to, if you're looking for a magic school, that will be tiers one and two of the Patreon. And if you are looking for a occult network or an occult again mentor i also mentor through coven of the sacred torch the fifth tier of the patreon and we also have the ritual just coming up at the end of this month into a new year you guys it's going to be the most powerful one yet so for those of you that wish to tap in that will be the fourth tier of the patreon and fifth tier of the patreon and on the fifth tier, this is the coven where you get to talk to me personally, ask me questions, and I'm giving you in-depth data sets that, I mean, the rest of the Patreon doesn't get. So if you want to talk to me, hey, book a consultation today. Uh, follow me on Instagram, you guys. I also have an Instagram as well as uh, TikTok. Instagram, Occult Cat TV. Patreon, Occult Cat TV. Uh, TikTok, O'Shea Johnson 5, also Occult Cat TV. And with that, you guys, if you feel free to email me if you are looking for a magic mentor, ritual, or spell work. So have a beautiful day, you guys. Peace, and as well, namaste. Namaste, you guys. From I, myself, at the temple, as well from the deities. Have a good one. Peace. See, looking forward to our consultation soon, you guys.